Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, today it's going to be like a development class. Yay, I love doing development. Okay, today it's going to be about how to look within. Okay, how do we look within ourselves? How do we look internally to know what we're doing and how we're operating as a human being on our solistic level? Okay. Over the last couple of weeks in my videos, a couple of times I've mentioned we've got to self-analyze what we're doing. So this is what I'm now doing now as a development class for you guys. So today I've got five different things we can do to self-analyze who we are and to go within ourselves and work out what we're doing. Okay, so Firstly, before I even talk about what's in us, we must look at what is outside of us. We live in a three-dimensional world where we put such an onus on our materialistic environment around us. We pay attention to how long our eyebrows are. Um, girls look at their breast size. People put onus as an importance on their clothing, their car, their homes, what ornaments they have in their homes, what job they have or their title. So an accumulation of all those things is what we do on our external or out without of us. Okay, it's the outside representation of us. I personally say <clears throat> the more we put into our physical being, the less we're doing on our inside work, okay? Yes, I dye my hair and I put on a little bit of makeup and I put on nail polish, but that's just for me to make me feel good. It's not to, it's not a representation where I need approval for someone else, okay? I don't do it for anyone else's gain. So that's the first thing that we have to look at. Our external, which is our outer being. Who are we doing this for? Is it for our own good or is it for the good of others to make them feel good that we're in their life because we look or behave a certain way on the outside? So I said that there was five things when we go inside ourselves and they all relate to this self-analysis okay the first one is to now if you do want to write these down go grab a pen and paper okay do your own google search if you want hello i don't say i'm the only one talking about this stuff so you can go and research it so for number one it's to be aware in our presence so what are they talking about when they say be in the present moment it's when we pause not just for that five seconds that I just did <clears throat> so the idea here is to get comfortable so then you don't have to move for like half an hour and you just be aware of everything going on around us you may want to count noises so right now, if I'm being present in my environment, I count the noises. One, I can hear myself talking. Two, I can hear the traffic on the road. Three, I can hear a bird. I can hear someone talking down the road, so there's four. I've got a clock in the hallway that's ticking. I can hear the... So there's five. I can hear wind, so I've got six noises. So this is how we become aware of our external environment. Count the noises around you, okay? The more noises that are around us, and I'll be honest, the more noises around us creates this vibrational chaos that enters into our body and it does affect us. So best thing at night if you have trouble sleeping try and eliminate the noises we can't stop traffic on the road but we can certainly close a window so those noises don't enter into our own energetic field we can't stop the birds well birds don't usually sing at night time 
but people try to sleep through the day. So again, you do something, earphones or something to stop that interruption, that distraction, that chaos of those frequencies that we hear. Okay, so when they talk about being aware, it's also being aware of us. So as you pause, think about your body. Any pains, hurts, oopsies, you might have kicked your toe and it's hurting. So you concentrate on that feeling in your toe. So you're aware of everything that's going on around you. So that's number one dot point. Number two is our breathing. There are heaps of breathing exercises out there. And even in my book, which I'll show you here, Five Years in Heaven, The Teachings of Heaven, this is all the lessons that I got taught when I was up there. I actually have, let me just find it, on page chapter 13, which is page 331, I go into breathing techniques. So let's go over to 331 and let's do an excerpt on some breathing techniques. 331. Nearly there. Breathing techniques. When we are, now this is an excerpt straight from page 331. When we are nervous, anxious or stressed in any way, our breathing increases. We generally only take short, faster breaths instead of getting the oxygen down to the bottom of our lungs where it's needed most. Huh. Who knew that? So when we do our short breathing, like a pant, the oxygen's not reaching the bottom of our lungs where it does the most work, okay? So when we do our breathing techniques, we must breathe in all the way in and slowly exhale it. Hold it in there. And let it out. Some techniques are that you breathe in through your nose, breathe out through the mouth. All the way out. So the idea here is not to do it quick like a pant. You want to do it slowly. Because what it does, what is created when we breathe slowly, is that we are actually oxygenating our blood, which circulates through our whole body. And it actually clears us out energetically. Okay? It's all proven. Okay? Wow. So I go into breathing techniques. Chapter 13 in my book. Okay? So there's some breathing techniques in there. Okay. So number three. While you're sitting comfortably, check in on your feelings. So as you're sitting there, nice and comfortable, and we're aware of our present external, you count all your noises. You wake and you feel all your pains of that toe that you stubbed last week. Now we think about our feelings, our emotions. What sort of mood are you in? Are you happy or are you sad? Are you anxious or depressed? Are you feeling peaceful or on edge? So you ask yourself, what am I feeling? Am I feeling content? If not, why not? So you ask yourself that. What's happening in your life that's causing any sort of discord in your energetic being? So you go through all your emotions, those feelings. You might even pause and contemplate all your friends and families, co-workers, neighbours, anyone else that you know in the community. You think about that one specific person. And while you're calm, you think about that person and you think of how you reacted what emotion do you feel when you think about that person? Because this is where we identify if we do want people in our lives or if it's time to see you later. Okay? And remember here, there is no law that says who we must interact with. Okay? It comes down to our knowing ourselves and our boundaries through our emotions of who we want to associate with. If we associate with somebody and they always make us feel yuck, why have you got that person in your life? 
So when we're contemplating, because this is what we're doing, we're contemplating, going inwards, and we're doing these emotional reactions within our brain. Why am I happy? What am I doing in my life that's making me happy? I identify myself as a generous person. So what am I doing that makes me feel good when I'm generous? See how we go deep within our emotions. So on the other side of this, you may sit there and you think, oh, I'm really anxious. I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm so anxious. So you check in with your emotions. What are the symptomologies of that anxiety? Is your heart racing? Have you got the sweats happening? Have you got that brain fog where you get that tunnel vision where you can only think about one thing? So this is a good reflection now and contemplation because they're two words very, very important here. We contemplate why we're feeling a certain way so then we can deal with it better so we don't get that reaction of that emotion, okay? Let's just say tomorrow you've got to go to the dentist. You might be feeling, oh my God, is he going to use the drill? Oh my God, I hate the needle. Ah, don't go there, don't go there, I'm so stressed over this. So you, you're aware that you've got this situation, there's the dentist. And you're aware now of what the emotional reaction to that is. So now you can deal with that reaction, which is the emotion of what's going to happen in the future, which brings on anxiety, because anxiety is always based on the future. Depression is always based on the past. Okay? So if you do have anxiety, think about how you're trying to control the future event. We don't know if we're going to go to the dentist and we're going to use the drill and get the needle. Unless they've already advised us, oh, you're getting a root canal done. So you take your mind off that, okay? And you think about other things to fill that time until it happens. Because you're not trying to control what happens. You're actually now allowing it to happen when it does, but it's not interrupting with your life, okay? <clears throat> Why invest two days of anxiety when you're not going to the dentist for two days. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Thing that I have with my daughter. Because she doesn't like needles at all. When she has to go to the dentist. Um, I say to her. Think about what you're doing after the dentist. You're only going to be there for about an hour or two. So what are you doing after that? We might go to the park. We might go and buy an ice cream. We might go and see a relative. So you... Put your mind into that instance instead of concentrating and building something about what we don't like. Okay? So that's how we check in with our feelings, our emotions. Okay? So that was number three on the list. Number four are our thoughts. Wow. How many people... Go to bed, you're rocking and rolling for three and a half hours, unable to sleep because you've got 50,000 thoughts going through your head. I used to do that until I learned how not to do it. Okay? So this is where all these five steps interact. Because now I'm going back to being present when we have these thoughts going through our head boom ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba, tomorrow I've got to do that and I've got to do that and I've got to do that oh my god I've got to do that as well how am I going to sleep tonight I should just get up and start doing it and you think no I've got to go to sleep how do we shut off our brain by being present so as you're lying there in bed <coughs> One of the things that I do, I don't count sheep, but what I do is I spell words. So I think of words that I want to be. Calm, C-A-L-M. So I will actually sit there in my brain to distract it from thinking about everything I've got to do tomorrow. 
And instead of just writing the word calm, I do big letters like this. So I do the C. And I think C. And I fill it up with something like butterflies. I'll fill it up with butterflies. It's got his little bodies in there. And then I think of the letter A. And again, I do this big. <coughs> C, A. This time I might fill it with stars. So now I'm visualising this night stars. A black sky with sparkly, beautiful white stars glistening and shimmering in the darkness. Then I'll do L. L. C A L. What do we fill this one with? It might be an animal. So think about your favourite animal. Mine's a horse. Hello. I can't draw horses. So I'm just going to do. I'll fill it up with horses. Mm, they can't draw. But you fill it up with M's. Then we've got the M. You might fill it up with flowers. Beautiful pink, yellow, red, blue flowers. What sort of flowers? Are they tulips? Are they roses? So we sit there and we go, C. Oh, beautiful butterflies. A. A. I'm just filling my world with stars. L. My horses. Dolphins, mermaids, unicorns, whatever. Put it in there. M. I'll just put flowers there. Okay? So this is how we're distracting our brain so it doesn't think. The next technique here that I like using, <clears throat> counting. You count to ten. You say, oh, that's easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But now pause and count five between each letter, each, each number. One, two, three. You get up to ten. You think, oh, that was easy. So now put half a minute between each number and now go to 30. So that's going to take a few minutes to get to 30 now, right? I know somebody who counts to 100 at night and he leaves a minute between each number. And you, what happens is you're training your brain not to think. Because for that minute, what our brain is actually concentrating on is the next number in sequence. So if we, we're up to number 68, <clears throat> your brain's sitting there going, OK, I know the next number, I know the next number, I know the next number. Instead of saying you've got to get up in the morning and do that report, oh my God, you've got to vacuum, you've got to take your daughter to school, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. Okay? So that's a really good sleeping technique. Okay? Count your words out. Think of long words like tranquility, T. And you've got to wait five seconds until you do the R and then the A. Tranquility. Think about a word like caring. C-A-R-I-N-G. But you leave 10 seconds between each letter. C. You come back to the A. Because our brain can't think <clears throat> of anything other than what's in that sequence of what it's going to be saying the next time. Okay? So that's all how we change our thoughts. So we're not stressing or reacting to situations going on out of our control okay so we've gone through one be present and aware number two is our breathing exercises number three is our feelings checking on your emotions are you happy or sad number four is our thoughts how many thoughts go through my head oh i reckon i, I sometimes think there's about 20 people talking inside my head got all these things going on so i shut them down by thinking of one thing C A L M. 
and then all the thoughts go away. Our last one that we can do, number five on the list, is journaling. Write things down. Make your list of to-dos. If you've got to do a report tomorrow, take your daughter to school, vacuum the house, do this, do that, do that, blah, 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 blah. Make a list of it all. Because once it's written down, the brain actually sees that as it's already done. What? <clears throat> it's true. Once we write it down, that to-do list, the brain is already creating that false reality that we've done it. So when we write down, I've got to vacuum the floors, your brain is already visualizing you turning on the vacuum, sweeping it out throughout, and then clearing out the dust catcher and putting the vacuum away. So it eliminates that anxiety of going to sleep or lying there calmly connecting with ourselves where we can't think because we're thinking about so, too many other things going on. <clears throat> so journal. Write down things. When you're at night, okay, you might do this. I'm going to think about being calm. So you draw your little pictures. with Fill it up. Get out your pencils, your different coloured pencils. And do this before you go to bed because our brain is reading the words. C-A-L-M. Tranquility. Calmness. Peace. Loving, generous, kind. Put in all those words. And then you find that you go to sleep really calm. Okay? Because these five techniques, I'm not going to call them my own, because there's a lot of places out there that use similar techniques, but I just broke it down into the five good ones for today. But what we do is we contemplate who we are. We look within us and we identify who we are. Who are we? Why do I feel happy? Why do I feel sad? Why do I feel compelled to do things? Hmm, that's a big one. Why do we feel compelled to do things? So you have to answer that to yourself while we're in this like calm meditative state of being present in the now. Okay, so what are the benefits that come from doing these techniques? One is we get self-esteem because once we identify who we are, you know, if you can honestly say to yourself, man, I'm always angry. And remember here, anger is only a reflection of something else going on. No one is only ever angry. There's always a reason why someone's angry. Okay, so if you can say to yourself, man, I'm always angry. Look at why you're getting angry. Check in with your emotions. So you go through all your instances. Am I angry when I drive to work? Am I angry when I have to get up early? Am I angry that I've got to take my daughter to school? Am I angry with my neighbors? Am I angry? So you work it out. Working it out is when we're doing this self-analysis of ourselves. We contemplate on who we are. And this is when we can journal it down. And you can say on this piece of paper, I'm always angry. I didn't realize. <clears throat> I'm angry every day. I have to go online and I'm writing all these comments to people every day. Why am I so nasty? Now, the big thing in that sentence was the why. Why? And then we can do it on the flip side. For oh, I know there's some really good, loving people that watch my channel. So let's just say, okay, I'm really generous. Okay? I'm really generous. I feel good when I give food to the homeless or I'm making up packs to give to pe um, women in DV refuges or I'm just happy if I go outside and feed the birds. Why? Why? What does it make you feel? And why? So you reflect on it. And you say, oh, I like looking after other people. I see that perspective of what they've been through. I've personally lived in a women's shelter when I left my first husband. I know what that's like. Huh. So I now have compassion. I have understanding for anyone else going through those situations. So... How good is it when we can use our bad experiences in life as a good experience? 
just yesterday. I don't know if you've been watching Brisbane and New South Wales weather. We've had major flooding because it's been raining here three days non-stop. Massive amounts of rain has fallen. And last night on the news down in Port Lismore, which, you know, you see the houses, the roofs of the houses, and then it's the flood water. So the whole buildings are all underwater. And they were showing aerial footage, because it's a chopper coming through, and there's all these people on a roof waiting to be evac'd out by helicopter. And the report said these people were staying in a hotel. I actually started laughing. Not that I'm upset about what they're going through because of course I'm upset about what they're going through you know this is horrendous you know you go for a holiday you're in a hotel and the floodwood has come up so now you're sitting on the roof waiting for an evacuation with helicopters but I was laughing because I put it into perspective these people wanted an adventure these people in three or five years will look back at this situation and they'll say Oh man, do you remember that time we sat on the roof and the helicopters came down? We got a free helicopter ride! So they're going to be laughing about it in five years. So this is where we can sit and say, is this really bad at this point? Am I making mountains out of mold hills? How will I feel in five years looking back at this? Does it really matter? That's the big thing about when we look inside ourselves and we can say to ourselves, you know what, my house just flooded, but today the sun's out, it's going to dry. I'm getting help from the SES. I've got help from this person. This person just came over. I've just met a new neighbor. So we always look at these as opportunities for growth. Okay. So. What else do we create when we analyze ourselves and we work out the sort of person we are? Is that we get confidence. We know who we are. We know what's making us not well. We make us know what's feeling good about ourselves. Because when we know ourselves, we can stand proud in that self-pride and we can say, you know what? I'm proud of myself. Because of what I've been through, every opportunity that turned bad in my life, I've turned it into something good as a consequence. Hindsight is good as good as 2020, right? So we look back at past events and you say, was it as bad as I thought at the time? So is now, what's happening to me now, is that as bad as it's going to be like when I look back in five years time? So we look at that self-reflection, we contemplate, and this builds our confidence. So then we can stand tall and say, well, I didn't die during that event. Let's see what the future brings. Because this is how we now get self-worth. It brings in self-value and most of all self-love through our self-esteem and our confidence. So guys, embrace who you are, whether you're on the end of the spectrum where you could be like a narcissistic psychopath, or if you're on the other path where you're like an ascended master level and you're going around barefoot giving out food and to the homeless, etc. Wherever you are on this spectrum, identify who you are through this self-reflection. And this self-contemplation. And you say to yourself, do I like being this person? Wow. Because when we say, do I like who I have become by doing these actions? Am I embracing myself as a person? Or is it a big show pony situation where I'm just doing it for show for other people? And I hope that's not the case because inside is what matters the most. And if we lie to ourselves, we're not never going to get far in life, are we? So we've got to be honest within ourselves. So guys, last message tonight. One, be present, be aware of everything around you. Two is your breathing. Three, 
feelings, which is our emotions. Four is our thoughts. How do we slow them down so we can be more present in the now so then we can function better as a human? <clears throat> and last one, write things down. Every time you feel something, an emotion, write down, right now I'm feeling sad. Why? What made you feel sad? Or on the other side of it, right now I'm feeling happy. So what's just happened to make you feel happy? Write it down. Because they're moments to be proud of. Did you notice my door just opened? There's no wind. Look, my hair's not moving. My door just opened. All happens in Linda's house. Someone's coming in to say hello. Okay. So lastly, I'm just looking at my door. It just opened. Okay. Last one. Feel secure in who you are. That's a pretty powerful statement. Feel secure in who you are. Because once we know who we are on the inside, it emits out of us. It's a pheromone, chemical, whatever you want to call it, our aura. And other people pick up that energy and they feel it too. I hope this has helped us today, guys. i got to go find out who's just opened my door and have a little chat with them. Talk to you all again soon, guys. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.